Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Upper Inguin. We have Kaido starting as the Midnight Blue or Dark Blue Zerg bottom right Inguin. We got Refrigerator starting as the Yellow Protoss. This is on Vermeer, and if you caught game one, I'm not going to say Refrigerator played bad because he did not. Instead, we had, though, Kaido playing insane. Absolutely incredible play from him. Very, very solid play. And it's... I can't... I, I can't point to anything Fridge did aside from maybe opening up with the off meta forge first and maybe not recognizing uh, with his scouting that a quick hive was up in order to be able to combat and slow down Kaido's economy in any way, shape or form. Um, but really it's like, those are really high level things that, that you have to be a really high level Protoss to first of all, recognize what's happening there. And second of all, to be able to respond. And so Fridge, Played very sharp out of the build order he had, but Kaido just played really phenomenally. Had a fantastic build order, top to bottom, and just macroed his brains out. So we'll see if it's a repeat here in game two. It's unfortunate for Fridge because it's go he's going up against a very strong Zerg opponent, clearly, in the opening stages of the bracket. No, going a little bit... Okay, so I think he spotted. Able to wheel back in. He is going to open up Forge first once again. And he's going to be able to recognize that it's a spawning pool first. Should get the preventative, preventative cannon down. Even Fr I want to comment on Fridge's excellent play in game one. Even though he did drop it, he kept that probe alive for a good and kept it scouting, getting active information for an extremely long period of time. With a bunch of Zerglings being aggressors, this drone, let's see if it, the Overlord switching direction the drone going to check top left as soon as the drone finds something finds that there is nothing top left it should know immediately that the base is in fact in the bottom right in the meantime fridge looking like he might want to take a risk just a pair of zerglings being created thus far it looks like he wants to try to sneak a nexus before a cannon to try to make maximum economic impact this is going to pay off because it's just initially two zerglings that are being constructed Probe trying to stay active in the meantime. It is being continually spotted by that Overlord making its way. And it looks like, interesting enough, Kaido not wanting to have to deal with that initial probe harassment. So moved out that drone that initially I thought was scouting upper left, instead dropping a hatchery right there. That might have been an opportunity. Well, the Zerglings also making sure you're keeping an eye on that probe because there might have been an opportunity to drop a pylon and some cannons if they lost track of it. But look at that screening from Kaido keeping that probe away from that natural expansion. It looks like that is going to be three hatchery before gas. Once again for Kaido, playing a very economically aggressive. Fridge trying to dance, really being taxed with this micro here. Loses the probe this time. Very solid dancing of the Zerglings to apply pressure right there. In the meantime, gas is going up. We have a pylon in the main to get the assimilator down cannon and gateway warping in on the front. Zerglings aren't really going to be able to shoot that gap, but they will be able to at least keep an eye on what's going on here on the front door. Probe wandering out just in case, or no, it's going to do the continuation scout. Kaido trying to get a track. He does have, he is managing to match speed currently and angle, and it looks like this might turn in, we'll see if this turns into a 973 because we have that Hydralis den down. That is a stereotypical response to eliminating where it's basically getting rid of that early scout can oftentimes open up that style of play, but it looks like Fridge going to be able to wander up. He needs to wander to this location to recognize the probe saturation there instead of at the naturals, because nine seven here the later drones are going to get planted on the on the mineral patches where it's you're going to have five drones out here. So basically, fewer drones at this direction. It ends up equalizing the same. So here we got eight, probably a ninth coming in not too long. Three, and then instead five at this location. And it looks like two additional drones going to saturate here. So effectively, overall, the proper amount of uh, drones to execute this build order, it's just they're scattered across different locations. But in the meantime, this 12 o'clock base gonna be, usually, yeah, the saturation you want, one drone per mineral patch. More. Another drone sneaking... Wow, really, actually. Keeping the drones active. Did I miss that... Looks like I missed that probe getting killed again. On the front door. For, 
We already have a Zealot out. We got plus one weapons. We do have a Stargate warping in and another plus one weapons build. This is unfortunate for Fridge though, because oftentimes this is kind of the build order that shifted Protoss away from this exact kind of opening. Hydralisks are already starting to mount an attack on the front. And this is why players oftentimes open gateway first and start building initial Zealots. One, so they can have a uh, scatter Zealots a little bit more in the mid game, but also to have more of an attack force to deal with this exact problem right here. Preventative cannon being dropped there by Fridge. Let's see if he piles the resources on to get additional cannons down right now. Though the first Corsair going to move out, is it going to peek out to the front here? Is peeking out to the front, sees the Hydralisks. And let's see if he cancels, this would be a good opportunity to cancel plus one weapons. Hydralisks already starting to work on the gateway and the forge on the front. Two additional cannons being dropped for Fridge. Corsair making its way out to the main, recognizes the Hydralisk den, but that information's pretty much already been revealed. Kaido sitting on 22 workers. That forge, is he going to cancel plus one weapons as well to get that money back? Probes pulling off the front. Forge drops. I don't think plus one weapons was canceled. And now it's probes and zelts trying to dance as additional cannons warping in and the probes getting picked off. Let's see if Kaido, I think he's going to just macro back into this. Because oftentimes you can get that damage, you can just have a clump of Hydralisks, you don't have to pull the trigger. And it looks like, yeah, he's just going to sit back and macro because he's got the layer tech going, he's got some additional hatcheries dropping as well. Two Corsairs moving up, looking for... The problem with this is, okay, maybe there's some Overlords there to hit at the natural expansion. But you already have three Hydralisks protecting them, and even with plus one weapons, I don't know that it's going to be sufficient to punch those down without losing Corsairs rather rapidly. So Fridge really doesn't have a way to economically pressure Kaido. Gateway just getting back online. He doesn't have plus one weapons. The drones are continuing to build, in fact, so much so that there's a spare drone out on the front, battle drone. And Fridge is already working against what's kind of a front door seal, vastly outnumbered on the front. Dropping some gateways behind this. Maybe to go for a continuation gateway flood, getting that forge back up as well. Plus one weapons is finished. And Fridge now starting to make those Corsairs active, but unfortunately now yeah, there's a, a good amount of Hydralisks under this, and I don't know that these two Corsairs... Yeah, and eating some free damage as well. So right now, Fridge... Oh, is he going to lose one of those Corsairs as well? Looks like they're just kind of planting. They've taken a serious beating. At least one of them is maybe a hit or two away. Supply count's even, and that usually means Zerg is in a fantastic situation. We do have the Citadel of Adun, but no Zelt leg speed as of yet. Templar Archives, Robotics, Facility, plus one weapons. Only four gateways down instead of what you would see with a typical six in response. A couple pylons and refridge. Yeah, you just got to sit back, macro up, stack a bunch of troops, and then hope that he can out macro in the long term. Unfortunately, right this second, it looks like Kaido has a slew of hatcheries down. He's working, he's, his plus one weapons might actually finish before Fridges does. He's got the Zerg Spire morphing as well. He could take additional bases. It looks like he's going to go ahead and take that base in the top left since he's got firm map control. These could become lurkers. He's also gonna have the option once that Spire's in place to do a quick switch to Mutalisks. There's no cannons at the natural expansion nor are there cannons at the main and the Corsair count is rather low. And it looks like, yeah, that one Corsair that was heavily damaged earlier actually got wiped out. So point being, there's a lot of opportunities for Kaido to pull this out uh, and have kind of a comfortable movement into the late game and ultimate victory. More Hydral is starting to pile on the front. Some Lurkers also being morphed. The Worker count just about even. And the Corsair, yeah, really has not been active at all. And that plus one weapons is a huge investment that early. We do have High Templar that are being produced. It looks like some Lurker eggs are being taken down by the cannons to maybe open things up a little bit more for refrigerators so we can mount a counterattack. It looks like it's going to be Zealot High Templar mostly. Now we have that gateway flood into the main. Waiting on range. 
and it looks like observers as well. We do have an observer out on the front, but that's mostly going to be targeting for the High Templar once Sidestorm is researched. And we already have a good amount of lurkers and other units swarming across the map. It looks like Kaido getting a good time to transfer to the upper left. The Corsair that was heavily damaged earlier is still alive, so might be able to scout this and at least find this. And this is looking very similar to game one, where Fridge needs to run out, take out some bases, do some sort of damage to Kaido before his economy just ends up out of control. Gathering his troops up, trying to lead with the Dragoons to get distant shots against those Lurkers. Poking at the top, losing, however, some units. Okay, Sidestorm there from Fridge, but plus one weapons already right there versus plus zero weapons otherwise. High Templar migrating out. There are some Sidestorms, but these are really well spaced Lurkers as well for Kaido. Now the Zelt's moving forward. And it looks like the Observer immediately picked off by Kaido. So Fridge going to be backed up, and this is looking scary. Drones looking to attack the front as well on this rally point. Actually, they're going to back out like cowards. They just wanted to see the front. I guess this is like Zerg tourism. And look at this. Just in case a shuttle was going to make its way out, you have incredible vision on the map from Kaido absolutely everywhere, making and just spreading it out as well to make sure that Fridge is in fact locked to the number of bases. And now it's turning into a big timer for Fridge. He's got to break out, got to take another base. On top of that, he needs to wipe out one of the additional bases that Kaido has, and he's got to do it at a supply deficit. So now trying to take shots, dropping some Psy Storm, loses the Observer again, and Kaido is just making this look brutally like impossible just making this look impossible for any protoss player to ever breach out you sneak out you get your observer picked off the lurkers end up standing this is textbook this is textbook zvp right here and uh yeah rough for refrigerator overall the observer sitting on the corner i'm almost wondering if a vision upgrade would be beneficial as far as a follow-up side storm on the forward lines right there Another decent side storm to the Hydros down to the south. Fridge starting to peek out. Get some pot shots here and there. But being backed up into a second lurker line, the Hydralisks moving right back through. The Observer again under fire. Another Observer to the north remaining stalwart. And he did a really good job actually of pecking away at this attack force. Now starting to move on to the lurker lines. But it's Hydralisks versus... Dragoons, which is not the trade he wants, and also these High Templar are dangerously exposed, mostly getting ignored right this second because they simply do not have any energy to cast Psystorm. And now Kaido has opened up a 40 supply lead, approximately. 37, well, 37 is the moment I said it if you wanted to be totally accurate. He's got macro hatches absolutely everywhere, plus two weapons about to come online. A huge stack of blue outside the natural expansion. And his plus two weapons is finished. I wouldn't be surprised if Kaido just gets... He doesn't need to get aggressive and finish this off, but I wouldn't be shocked if he decided to get a little bit more aggressive and just finish the game. Uh, just to make sure there aren't opportunities. Yeah, peeling in, picking off some observers, dodging out of that side storm once again. We got a whole lot of gateways pumping for Fridge behind this, but it's still not enough to keep up with Kaido's economy. Kaido just pumping and rallying troops to the front. And Yao now taking shots, trying to draw the troops back on the lurker lines, get pecks of damage, because he can afford to lose troops here where Fridge is boxed into two bases and he's got another four minutes before he's mined out of his main is basically down to one base versus five. Another Observer getting picked off. Another Psy Storm dropped. Good Psy Storms blanking in the Hydralisks, but there's just not enough support troops. And all of a sudden, Kaido has opened up a supply lead that's twice the size, and that right there is why so many people talk about how brutal it is to play PvZ. Great play from Kaido. Textbook contain and smothering play. And Kaido looks really, really strong. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Regardless, should be fun. I'm hoping I have more Kaido replays as they progress. Um... He didn't give me his replay directory, but I might have had it from other people. Hope you guys enjoyed it regardless. Thanks for listening.